Hey, this presentation will be about NWB Explorer, an application that allows you to read, visualize and export the content of NWB files. My name is Afonso Pinto, I am Portuguese, currently I am taking Masters in Computer Engineering and I did my Google Summer of Code project in the OpenWorm community. OpenWorm is an open source organization dedicated to creating the first virtual organism in a computer. Before starting exploring this tool, let's make it clear what NWB is and why it is important. NWB is sort of uh, Esperanto of neuroscience, an unified language for neuroscience content. With it, the data can be easily shared, pulled and analyzed, and the field gets all the tools to involve. Now, I will guide you sprint by sprint along what was made during this summer. Sprint Zero. Sprint Zero was not really a sprint, but I couldn't leave it behind due to its importance. As Arnav, the other student accepted in the Open Worm community during Google Summer of Code, pointed out in his slideshow, this beginning phase can be very challenging and has the steepest learning curve. Because of this, I have to give a shout out to other community, and in particular to my mentors Matteo and Giovanni, for making me feel welcome since day one. Thanks guys. Sprint 1. Sprint 1 was reasonably easy. Improving the readme of NWP Explorer showed up to be very useful not only for me but for other members as well. The second part of this sprint involved PyJPETO, which is a Python auxiliary tool in dealing with the JPETO framework. Sprint 2. Sprint 2 was trickier than you might think. While doing this task, we find out that there were some compatibility issues between the target file and the most recent Py NWB version at the time. The data in that file was no longer viable. We had to change to another file, kindly provided by Nicholas from the Allen Institute, and readapt some of my future tasks. Sprint 3. Sprint 3 is the first that I will be able to show you in action. In this sprint, Besides refactoring the code to read a generic NWB file, we also add support for plotting numerical time series read directly from the file. This is me plotting some time series. Now this is me moving those widgets around. We can overlap those plots. It's easier to compare them this way. We can resize widgets and we can calculate the average of the overlaid plots. Sprint 4 all of use is a Python library designed to make data analysis. Due to its increasing popularity among scientists, we agree that the integration of all of use in NWB Explorer would be of great interest. So we did it. Taking advantage of bouquet and external HTML pages injected into iframes, user can now enjoy all the qualities of it. After this introduction, we figure out a way to allow the users to use and expand special, plot, special plots that can be generated given an NWB file with some specific fields. For now, to do this, users must create a folder inside NWB Explorer public plots with two files, a JSON file with the name, ID and requirements and a Python file implementing the plot. Folder and files must have must share the same base name. Here you can see a dummy plot generated using this method and taking advantage of all abuse. Sprint 5. Sprint 5 comes with a disclaimer. This was my last coding sprint. At the time I'm recording this, it's still under review. So it might suffer some adjustment in the future.
the main idea here is to be able to extract all the possible image series present in a NWB file and allow the user to view them in a NWB Explorer workspace. That noise you can see might be caused by a bad encoding or simply and hopefully <laughs> Uh, because of the original data was a dummy example. The authors of the file were contacted and I'm still waiting for them to reply. Sprint 6. Well, this sprint was... This slide will be as boring as the task itself. <laughs> I'm just kidding. As you will see in the next slides, due to, his, due to this experience, I now highly value documentation. Shout out to PyNWV folks for having a nice documentation about their API. The sprints are now over. It's time to do a quick briefing about this experience. Let's start by the difficulties and how I was able to overcome them. Being the new guy. Not only in open source development, but also in life, being the new guy can be challenging. The key to surpass this, sorry the cliché, is to be yourselves. Communities are made from and for new guys like us. Making new people to join and help the cause is their main goal, so both parts are interested in our well-being within it. Project knowledge. It's not so pleasant when everyone around us are familiar with stuff we can't easily understand. But this is normal. The longer we are in a project, the more we know about it. If we simply can't understand on our own, then we ask. Open warm folk shown to be very receptive to my questions. Work as a community. This one it at me particularly. Being dependent on others is very different from working in our own private projects. Other people may have different items. With that in mind, we should plan ahead and try to take advantage of a heterogeneous community driven by a common goal. Now moving on, on to lessons learned. Scrum. Scrum is a managing framework known by typical two-week sprints and frequent meetings to plan them. This is highly used in the open one community. Personally, I do have mixed feelings about this approach. If from one side it's true that it helps to it helps us to be updated with the most recent developments in the community. In other side, it's also true that it relies on peer pressure, which I don't see as the best approach for the open source community. Nevertheless, I'm glad I had the chance to see this in action. Documentation. I never ever had to rely so much on documentation before. I'm sorry for all the times I have neglected this batch and control. I always found batch and control of extreme importance and therefore I was already quite familiar with it, but still I was able to learn one or two very interesting things in this subject. Django. Simply it's my new favorite web framework. React. I wasn't a big fan of front-end development before, and I still don't, but if I were I would use React. Chrome Dev Tools. I was blind, but now I see. I thought I knew what to use this before, but I was wrong. <laughs> it was very useful. It was a very useful lesson to learn. Uh, it was really helpful to debug and explore the Gepetto front end, for example. Now the next steps. Before asking what to do from here, let us first see where we are. Currently. I would say we have a robust prototype of NWB Explorer. A lot of features are already functional, and I think they are good enough to allow the user to get an idea of the project. From here, we can still involve. There is a Kanban board with some features that are planned to be done, and a bunch of space available to your suggestions. When the community finds the code mature enough, the project can have an official and widely disseminated release. And that's it. Thanks everyone for watching. You can find us on Slack or GitHub. Actually, I couldn't finish without officially give a special thanks to all the people 
who directly or not contributed to the creation of this tool, in particular to my mentors, Giovanni and Matteo, and also to Shiwai and Nicholas and many others. Thanks guys.